Good evening. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the 3 November 2014 Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting. One, oath of office, Chief of the Hampton Police Department, Richard Sawyer. Mr. Sullivan, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to uh, be here tonight and to witness the swearing in of the next Hampton Police Chief, Richard Sawyer. So, Chief, if you'll step forward, and our Town Clerk, Jane Cipher, for the oath of office. From the Town of Hampton in the County of Rockingham to Richard Sawyer of Hampton, New Hampshire in the County of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of police chief in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, the said Richard Sawyer, as police chief of said town. And upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this third day of November 2014, Fred Welch, town manager. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Richard Sawyer. I, Richard Sawyer. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As police chief. As police chief. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Remember the time I dropped the hammer on your head? <laughs> That'll make it easy. <laughs> special to come into this room that I've spent a lot of time in over the last few years and see so many different uh, parts of my life standing here. Um, 
It may seem silly. Um, it's great to see all the officers here, but some of the folks that I've met through my other endeavors, uh, particularly the coffee shop. Uh, <laughs> hey, I told you you have to be quiet, okay? Uh, and obviously my friends in the business community, and particularly down at the beach. Um, this is really special to me, particularly the fact that moving here in 1979 with my family and establishing ourselves down at the beach with a, uh, with a family restaurant and then moving on to the police department just coming full circle, going to Winnicott High School, going back as the SRO there, and now this. Um, I just don't know what to say. This is just an incredible moment for me and my family. And to all those that were trying to congratulate me before, I will accept the congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
watching that Menino funeral today and they had a shot in of the whole hotel, I mean the whole cathedral. The one woman that there had white hair stood out from everyone else. Well, that was exciting. It is a hard act to follow. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Roman two, public comment period, please. Mr. Silver. Pardon me, Mr. Moody. <laughs> Art Moody, three Thompson Road. A very leafy road at the present time. Found out today that DPW is only going to pick up once yard waste during the month of November in the fall. For decades. They've picked up four times, all four weeks of November. And I don't have a trailer. I don't have a truck. I've got eight bags and barrels out there now. But they say they're not going to pick them up until the week of the 17th. And that's the only time they're going to pick them up. Why is there a cut of 75% in that service? We plow town road, we plow private roads, even dirt roads. We pick up trash and recycling on private roads. We even plow and sand class six town roads contrary to state law. But all of a sudden, after decades, they cut a service like that, 75%. <clears throat> even at the end of November, all the leaves aren't down on oak trees anyway. But now they're going to cut it off in the middle of the month. I protest. I think everybody should withhold their December tax payments that rely on that service. Unbelievable. You know, it's just like the <clears throat> rotten state government. 
passing everything down to counties. And of course, towns and city taxpayers pay for county government and towns and cities. Now town government is passing it on to residences. Now if I had a business that gets picked up, I make money on my trash if I'm a business, you can just raise my prices. Residences can't. I protest and I want to reinstate it. Last spring I called in April, when's your one time spring cleanup? Well, we did that in March. The weather was winter in March. How stupid can you be? And now they've cut this down in the fall when the leaves fall to one time. Rotten, rotten. For the public comment this evening. Mr. Silberdick, please. Good evening. Uh, Norman Silberdick, 70 Tide Mill Road, speaking on behalf of the Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. Uh, my comments tonight are primarily related to the default budget. I had intended initially to send you a copy of what I was going to say. I was traveling most of the day, so I couldn't do it, but I will send you a written version of what I ha I'm saying. As you know, the board approved the 2015 default budget last Monday in the amount of uh, 26 million five hundred thousand. That's 886,000 increase over the 2014 budget, despite health insurance going down by 200,000, retirement costs rising by only 144. Combine these two primary factors that were cited earlier in the year's budget process as the main drivers of a huge increase actually decreased by 56. The default budget is a 15-page report containing 500 line items. The approval process to us was unacceptably nonchalant. It was provided to the selectmen shortly before last Monday's meeting while the town manager was out on medical leave. And with all due respect to Christy, this is the first budget of a new finance director. The discussion and approval of last week's meeting lasted all of four minutes. Uh, and the only question asked related to the uh, assistant town manager being included in the default budget. There was no discussion and uh, after Selectman Griffin's motion to approve and unanimously vote on the default budget. And that's what we're asking you to take a look at again. The default budget is defined in the statute as the same amount as last year while allowing for increases that are the result of legally enforceable obligations are mandated by law. Legal commitments approved during 2014 primarily impacting employee compensation costs as well as stretch interpretations by town staff classifying many increases in the default budgets as contractual or statutory has produced what we believe is an end run around the voters. Here are a few of the items that we believe assert our, support our assertion. A $30,000 increase associated with the reclassification of a deputy tax collector from part-time to full-time. A 70,000 increase in sick leave buyback expenses driven by the expansion of qualifying events. A $25,000 increase distributed between two positions in the planning department. 21,000 wage increase in the library budget. 40,000 for the additional position in the assessing department noted as a statutory requirements. The statutes may stipulate property revaluation every five years and other requirements, but the need to add people to do it should be justified and approved by the town. 35,000 in bank service charges, a new line item this year is cited as a contractual commitment. We understand Citizens Bank is charging the town as much as a thousand a month in credit card fees. Have we entered into a legally binding obligation to pay these credit card fees that we're stuck with for 2015? And finally, a 50,000 or 5.7 percent solid waste tipping fees. While we do understand that there is a CPI-driven escalator in the waste management contract, the CPI has been running only between 1 and 2 percent for the past year. When adjusted for the decline in health insurance rates, the selectmen's proposed operating budget is a million and a half increase over 2014. It's also 644000 more than your 2015 default budget. 
and there's a very good chance that voters will select a default budget. The explanation that is mostly out of your control due to increases in health insurance and costs, retirement costs, in my opinion, doesn't cut it. They actually went down. Again, we're asking you to go back and revisit this and for further discussion, and uh, it's a very important topic. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Silberta. Further public comment? Yes, I'm Mike Pierce, 16 Hebman Avenue, and my email address is Michael Pierce underscore LBC at yahoo.com. My phone number is 603-926-3245. I requested the default the budget and the default budget on August 28th under 91A. Right to NOLA. After paying $25 to get the budget, <clears throat> I did not receive the default budget until a day after it was available, which is a violation of the right to know law. Next point, the board accepted and approved the default budget the very day it was available, and therefore I was unable to speak to the default budget because I did not have it until the next day. There are many things in that default budget, as we just heard, that need to be discussed in public. A lot of things in that default budget. Not only was it sent to me late, it was sent to me in an unmanageable format. Instead of the format that was available and that I asked for, and again, a violation of the right to know law. It's two for two. Based on this experience and the fact that the board approved a deep budget of some $26.5 million with almost no discussion, it appears from the outside, transparency is being completely avoided. And add to that, the board meetings, which have almost no discussion on issues of great importance to the taxpayers, it appears that everything has been beside, decided before the meetings. Again, transparency is lacking a lot. Thank you. Any further public comment this evening? Seeing none. Roman 3, announcements and community calendars. Selectman Woolsey, please. Uh, since we'll all be at the polls at different times tomorrow, I'm hoping to see a large turnout of voters coming to express their opinions. Don't complain to us if you don't uh, like what happens and you haven't voted. So all of us will be there at different times, but we'll be looking for you and hope for a large participation from the public. And just my other comment, uh, it, it is such a refreshing sight to see a new department head sworn in in public, before friends, before in the public view, with friends and family around him. What a wonderful thing for a democracy to have your local officials uh, standing right out there in public to accept congratulations and to swear their oath of office. Uh, I, I thought it was a wonderful sight. Sir. Um, I would like to announce that I just heard that Joe Hurley, who was a longtime person helping with many things in Hampton, particularly at the Beach Precinct, um, passed away. So he'll be missed, that's for sure. So, Yes, the Hampton Firefighters Chili Cook Office, Thursday night at the Wallies, uh, benefiting the uh, Seacoast Fire, or the Hampton Firefighters Toy Bank. And the chief has fire extinguishers standing by. <laughs> Sir. Yes, voting day tomorrow, as Mary Louise said. I uh, hope everybody votes. And don't overload the, the, the town tonight with your signs, <laughs> which last week I said it was illegal, and it is, if there is an RSA saying that. Uh, also, Wednesday morning, get out there and pick your signs up. Put them away. Don't leave them out there. Thank you. Sir, public comment. No, I'm good. Yeah, you good? Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, a, a quick uh, couple of notes uh, from your selectman. Uh, Joe Hurley was larger than life. Uh, he was dynamic. Yeah. He was uh, 
he was Hampton, he was Hampton Beach, and he carried that flag for a lot of years. And uh, um, God bless him, God bless his family, and thank you for bringing that up tonight. Uh, he'll, be, he'll be sorely missed. Uh, 239th birthday party for the United States Marine Corps, the world's finest gun club. That will be uh, next um, Monday, 10 November, 1900, uh, top side <coughs> at the uh, galley hatch. So all those that uh, are part of Marine families, those that uh, are former Marines, are Marines, uh, you're all invited down there, business attire. Um, Jack Votes, Colonel Jack Votes, uh, SOS recipe produced by Sergeant Babolis, uh, finest in the land, it's a cash bar. So look forward to seeing you all there. To those that have uh, thrown their hat into the uh, ring for elected office uh, locally uh, in, uh, in the, the national level, I think they're uh, an extraordinarily brave, um, perhaps uh, insane lot, and I, I thank those that, that participate no matter what their uh, uh, political views or economic views are, but uh, as Mary Louise so aptly said tonight, uh, it, uh, it is a tremendous democracy. It's the only one we have, and there's some great people that uh, choose to attempt to lead. Uh, Roman four consent agenda. One, appointment to the Hampton Beach Area Commission, Richard Griffin. We need to administer that or make a motion. We already have made the motion. Do you need the motion? Button. We'll need the oath in front of Jane, I think, and the select list from the, from, the, from the signatures on the board on it, I believe. Okay. For the Hampton Beach Commission? Uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, you're, you're going to um, step aboard on that again. Yeah, I'll Officially. just stop and see Jane. Get with Jane? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Roman 5, appointments. One, Carmack Warren Operations Manager, Aquarian, Water, Alpha, update of water system highlights, sir. Good evening. Thanks for the time. <coughs> you should all have a copy of this handout that I dropped off this morning. Uh, this is just an update of what's going on with the, with the water system, just a brief overview of uh, why we're here. Um, our mission is to provide water service 24-7 uh, for all uses in the town. And it's also ensure that every drop we produce is safe to drink as defined by the, the federal government. And we really work hard to try and optimize the cost. Uh, we deliver it at your fingertips for less than one, one and a half cent uh, per gallon. Just a quick uh, summary of our operations. Through October, we've pumped almost 700 million uh, gallons uh, year to date. Uh, that's an average of a little under 2.3 million gallons uh, per day. The peak day was July 1st, just under 4 million gallons. And you can see the uh, sort of this month by month uh, peak there is um, pretty typical. If you have any questions, just, just shout them out, please. Uh, just a, a brief um, tabulation of all the activities, the major activities involved with operating the, the water system. Um, lots of activities in some areas. Uh, some not quite so much, uh, but they're all important uh, to uh, providing uh, water service to the community. Uh, big news is we have a, a WICA rate adjustment um, currently uh, submitted to the PUC uh, last week. Uh, just a little bit of a review. <clears throat> the last general rate case wrapped up just about a year ago and with respect to uh, WICA had set a 5% uh, annual cap um, as a maximum rate increase of 7 uh, over the course of uh, in between rate cases. Uh, and those are pretty much the numbers that were originally established when the program uh, started. Last year, uh, in April, you recall, we got approval for a 1.37% increase based on projects that were done last year. Uh, that was booked, but it was not collected because of the uh, the changes in the federal tax law, and we knew there was an adjustment coming that was going to reduce our expenses. So um, that basically means we need less revenues. And the intent was to fold that into the the next WICA rate increase, which will um, is proposed for the beginning of next year, based on <coughs> projects that we completed in 2014 up through the end of September. Uh, the numbers look like there'll be another 1.17 percent increase. So that added to last year's is just over two and a half percent. The tax adjustment is a four percent decrease. So the net effect is just under one and a half percent rate decrease that assuming the PUC 
approves the numbers, approves the timing, will um, become effective on uh, January of next year. These are the uh, major projects that we did this year. Um, we drove up and down Ocean Boulevard. You saw us replacing a, a pretty good stretch of Maine out there. Um, we're still at work uh, on Great Boar's Head. We got into some some issues um, <clears throat> that uh, basically delayed us being able to finish that by September 30th. So it really doesn't count towards this year's WICA. Um, we propose we include those costs in next year's. Uh, we also did a couple other um, small projects. 400 feet on Wendekunnet Road and uh, 300 feet on 2nd Street where we had some issues with main brakes and uh, it just made sense to replace the mains rather than keep patching brakes. So uh, in total we replaced uh, about 3,300 feet of main uh, this year uh, which is, is pretty good progress for us. Also I, I just point out that the, all the new main is uh, high density polyethylene, basically plastic. Which we hope will produce a really, a really good service and, uh, and a long service life. Uh, this is a summary of the uh, project that counts towards the uh, the uh, WICA adjustment. Um, we actually have 937,000 approved on the list. We uh, we came up uh, quite a bit short of that, just under 600,000. The majority of that, the two main replacements, Ocean Boulevard, which was the big one this summer. And uh, we'd actually replace a section of the transmission main at Well 9, which is out on Mill Road, uh, late last year. We had the Boar's Head uh, main on there, but as I mentioned, that's postponed. Um, Gentian Green Street, uh, Meadow Pond Road, um, and Ross Avenue were basically just um, expenses we anticipated um, incurring this year for design, but they wouldn't count towards WIC until the mains are actually replaced. And, and, um, and put into service. So, uh, Gentian Green and Meadow Pond have sort of dropped down the list. We've had other ones that have, have sort of bubbled up to the top. Ross Avenue is on the list for uh, work next year. Um, hydrant services and valves. <clears throat> Replacements count towards WICA, but only the expenses exceed 50000 And we just didn't see the number of, uh, pro of, of those uh, um, that equipment that needed to be replaced this year, so uh, we didn't we didn't hit the, the threshold, so none of those costs count towards WICA. And we replaced one one of our production meters uh, this year, so we're a little bit less uh, than what we, we typically expect to see. Just for uh, the uh, audience, could you please define WICA? WICA is the Water Infrastructure and Conservation Adjustment. You know, it's a program designed to encourage replacement of aging mains. Uh, because a lot of them are 100 years old. Um, they're wearing out higher frequency of brakes, poor water quality because they're old cast iron mains that are rusty. Um, and if we, don't, if we don't try and replace them on some schedule, um, the problems are just going to continue to get worse and the costs are just going to continue to escalate. So it's a program to get interim rate increases as well as, and sort of avoid the big sticker shock when we all go in at once at three, five, seven year intervals. And, and produce double digit rate increases. Uh, this is what uh, 2015 looks like. Um, most of it is the uh, main replacement projects. We're looking at roughly about 900,000. Um, Great Boar's Head, we're pretty sure that's going to finish a little over 200,000. The other projects we have in mind, I've put some ranges out there because we really won't know what the expense is likely to be for sure until we get them bid out, which will be uh, early the next year. but. We're looking at a stretch of King's Highway, basically from 11th Street down to 15th, and including those side streets. Uh, most of those are dead-end mains that come off Ocean Boulevard. They're old galvanized mains uh, that are prone to leaks and poor water quality, so we're going to replace those, link them into King's Highway. 12th Street's missing because that was so bad we did that this year. Uh, so we'll do the other four next year. Ross Avenue, I mentioned, that was one that was put in the early 60s back when uh, construction standards weren't what they are today. Uh, at the time, it was just a seasonal main. It basically, it was put in too shallow, and uh, we have to bleed it in the wintertime to prevent it from, from, uh, uh, from freezing. It's also on the town paving list for 2018, so yeah. our plans to get in there, get a, get a new main in place, and then we'll be out of the way when the town uh, wants to pave it. And um, 
finance is providing there's a section on cable road in, in rye that's uh, fairly high on the list so we're, uh, we're going to design for that and we'll see if we actually uh, have enough funds to, to uh, replace that or not for hydrogen services and valves our typical annual averages are about 72,000 so if we if we hit that uh, you take off the fifty thousand dollar threshold and it'd be about twenty two thousand that we count towards Wickham. And we typically replace a couple of production meters every year. We have twenty um, between our wells, some of our other facilities, and, uh, and on average we replace two two in any given year. Uh, just a snapshot of uh, capital expenses uh, to date this year, just the major categories, because if I gave you an itemized list it would be be pretty long. Um, it just shows generally where we tend to, to put most of the money in terms of replacements and uh, mains are the biggest biggest uh, category by far. We do a lot of services as well uh, and meters. And I've also put some numbers up on what uh, next year probably looks like. This one I sorted alphabetically, so it doesn't quite match up with the other one, but boosters, control valves, and tanks, let's, let's speak to that. We're looking at evaluating sort of how our pressure profile is across the system. Um, we have some areas that are probably too high or higher than they need to be is probably the best way to put it, which increases the risk of breaks and uh, makes leaks worse. So we're trying to evaluate maybe there's ways we can, we can change the pressure profile. And, um, Improve service, minimize our costs by reducing breaks and some other issues. Um, services, we typically do 40 to 45 um, new installations and replacements in a given year. We put a lot in this year. Uh, I think it's a sign of the economy is rebounding. Uh, if we do the three wicked projects that I had on there, we'd, we'd do about 3,300 feet of new main next year, which is, again, a pretty good number. Um, and the rest tend to be more or they call recurring categories, you know, equipment that needs to be replaced or rehabbed on a more or less a predictable schedule. Uh, just some other highlights. Um, as, as some of you may know, we've been replacing the older meters in our system with new meters that we read by radio, so we don't have to get inside to do that. Uh, this last month, we, we changed out the last one. We have no non-radio meters in service and what that does is allow us <clears throat> to seriously consider um, reading them and billing them on a monthly basis which will spread out the cost for customers and reduce the, uh, the length of time that an unknown leak is going to add to their bill because we'll read them on a monthly basis instead of a quarterly basis. So right now we're looking at the middle of next year to uh, implement uh, monthly billing. Um, also, I uh, sent a letter to, to uh, Fred Welch today. There's a, a copy attached. I guess to get our website on your town website, we need to ask your your approval to do that. So, that um, whether you want to do that tonight or wait wait till later, it's um, not all that important. But we just think it'd be beneficial for for existing customers and new customers who have questions about the water supply to be able to find it off the town website. And also, I just wanted to mention in terms of our staff, uh, Warren Barker was our general foreman. He's been with the uh, utility for over 40 years, 42, I believe. He retired uh, back in June. Um, he's ridden off into the sunset. And, uh, you may know Mike Bernier. He was promoted to, uh, to take his place. He's doing a fantastic job. has a good relationship, especially with the guys in the Public Works Department. Um, we hired... Uh, Matt Brillard uh, to replace him as a supply operator. Matt's a, a local kid. You may know that I think his, his dad works for the uh, fire department. and uh, mm -hmm. He's a great asset for us as well. So. That's all that I had. I take any questions. Thank you. Selectman Wilson. Great job on the line at the end of Winnicott kind of with um, Peter Rossen's new development. That was a dreadful mess in that area. That whole lot was terrible. Uh, that's a huge enhancement. And, of course, the old water line that the Italian workmen put in in 1907. Well, that was impressive, the old iron line. Um, I have a question on our list of projected articles here, warrant articles, because this says West Side Sewer Replacements for Hobson, Johnson, Riverview, Fellows, and Harris. 
Um, has has Aquarian been consulted on those? Do we know? Because we don't want to be planning a project without their piggybacking. I don't think. Should we? Shouldn't we be talking? I can speak to Mr. Did, have you had Last time I spoke to, I believe, it was Chris Jacobs about it. That mm -hmm. It wasn't on the immediate horizon, which is why we didn't include it in next year's. Well, this is on the list for uh, approval at the March 2015 town meeting, and I think it's premature unless Aquarian is planning. Well, we had, you know, we did Perkins and, and Auburn and so forth with the cooperation of Aquarian, so it seems to me that it's smart to plan these projects. Well, you, you raised the issue, but the water's here. I, I, I'm not prepared to approve Was there cooperation? Or well, I just want to point talk. it out. It's a good point. Cause Cause it's well, on I can follow up with, um, with Keith and Chris and okay. Cause I best to coordinate with that. Because if, you're, if different roads are on your radar, we need to coordinate here. Um, and I also, uh, I appreciate uh, the quarterly reports. I enjoy uh, seeing you guys come in. I like the idea of the link on the town website because water certainly is an important factor uh, in the community. I am hoping to see more involvement uh, with uh, Aquarian and the Conservation Commission and ultimately the Planning and Zoning Boards, especially with the uh, project that uh, came up without your knowledge uh, near the wellheads. We have to make every effort we can to protect our water supply. That's a precious supply. And water doesn't, uh, water doesn't magically appear. So um, I appreciate your help and, and what you uh, and your staff have done. Very nice report. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. Thank you. Thank you for your report. It's very informative. Now, there's something going on tonight there at, at uh, Boris Head. Does that have anything to do with Aquarian? Not that I'm aware of, no. Do you know what that is, Jamie? The, there's a police detail there, too. It, it, I, I don't know. They dug something out of the middle of that island there. Well, we do. I'm not aware. But it's, it's possible the contractor is still down there. I hope not. It's pretty dark. But oh. <clears throat> this week we were uh, cutting a valve in there in front of the Rocky Bend condos. Yeah, that's where it is. It's, oh. it's all part of it. We have to re replace their service line, and then we're going to cut cap the old main that goes up uh, oh. through the alley. So mm -hmm. they were into that today. They might have, they might have run late. Yeah, because it, it was happening, I think, when I came here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but thank you. You're welcome. A lot of great line replacements. Any line expansions proposed? <laughs> uh, there's nothing on the, on the books right now. Um, you know, some developers will come in. You, the Woodland Road would be a main extension if it gets approved. Um, okay. Things like that. Um, How about linking the line that comes out Drakeside Road with the one that comes out to Old Farm Road and tying that in together so that you have a, a loop system there instead of two dead end lines. Yeah, that's uh, that's sort of on the list. It's sort of a question of how we, uh, when we decide that it's justified by the cost. I'm, I'm really sort of hoping that some business will come in that would justify doing half of it, and then it'd be a real easy sell to, to do the rest of the. I think it would make sense to have that as a as a loop oh, instead yeah. of. <laughs> Uh, if you ever had a problem downtown, at least give you that other way to shift water around. Yep, it'll, and it'll help flow in water quality both on Drake Absolutely. side of the road. road. Uh, yeah. All right, thank we're, you. We're well aware of that. It's um, We've had some serious discussions about it, but it hasn't made it onto the priority list yet. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm set. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carl, I am looking at your uh, water quality report, mm -hmm. and uh, you talk about uh, infrastructure investment. Uh, but when you look at uh, the quality of the water and uh, that you never fail to meet demand and the excellent job that you guys do, I think that that is appropriate, that that enters into the discussion uh, and is part of public knowledge. Is, do we need to make a motion to have a link? or what, what are you asking for the website specifically? We just need your permission to put, to have your IT people put a link to our website on your, on your web page. Mm -hmm. I'll be happy to so move, Mr. Chair. Second. Wolsey Bridal, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> you make it look easy, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I guess that's a pretty good coffee. Mm -hmm.
Roman five number two, Mr. Ladd and other guests. <laughs> Alpha proposed committee for FEMA regulations. We don't have any PowerPoint presentations. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't look like that kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Sullivan's going to uh, do a brief intro, then your member from the Hampton Utility Commission, Mr. Griffin, will kind of quarterback this, then we'll go to the board after your presentation. Mr. Sullivan? Thank you, sir. As you recall, this came up in a conversation at a previous meeting with regard to um, uh, Mr. Ladd's comments. Um, so this was scheduled today for your, your briefing on that point, and uh, we'll let you take it away. Okay. I was here last week recommending that we create an emergency management committee. The reason for that, in part, is because the new flood insurance rates which are going to be very adversely affecting a great number of the members of the community. In excess of 2,000 properties in the community are in the floodplain. Last week, I asked if you could provide notice, at least to those who are in the floodplain, to address this issue now before the new mappings are in effect, which is September 2015. Under the community rating system, that's one of the things a community can do to qualify for discounting a premium for flood insurance. That is, provide notice to those who are in the floodplain that things are changing. And there are things some of those people can do now that they can't do a year from now. But if the community would send a notice to those people to at least check into it on the town's letterhead, I think you would have done something for the benefit of all those people and also for the benefit of the application for becoming a community-rated system. Now, I'm doing my research into the community rating system. Briefly, it's rated in 10 categories. We are now category 10. Everyone who is not in the community rating system is Category 10. By accomplishing a number of acts under FEMA's guidelines, you get 500 points of credit that puts you into community rating number 9, and for each additional 500 points of credit, you go up another rating, till in theory you get to, to 1 at 4,500 points of compliance. To be perfectly honest, I think there are maybe three communities in the whole country that are rated one. But it's not difficult to get into the nines, the eights, and the sevens, each one of which improves your discount by 5%. A nine is 5%, an eight is 10%, and a seven is 15%. Further going into this, I looked into a little bit of what FEMA suggests you do to create this sort of a committee. And their, in their statement, they say, Participation in the community rating system is, of course, voluntary. The community is presently in full compliance with the FEMA flood insurance program, then you qualify to apply. Then they suggest that your community's chief executive office, that is the mayor, the manager, the top official, appoint a community rating coordinator to handle the application work and to serve as the liaison <coughs> between the community and FEMA. The coordinator should know the operations of all departments that deal with the floodplain management and public information and speak for the community chief executive. In that regard, I reckon, and if you follow that suggestion, you can get a lot of guidance from a lady named Jennifer Gilbert, who's the New Hampshire Floodplain Management Program Coordinator in Concord. Uh, she, she, through her representative, spoke to the beach on floodplain issues, and it's my understanding, one of her specialties is community rating. Going beyond this, I think it's important the town consider creating an emergency management committee run by the town to give it <coughs> the proper authority it needs so it can get whatever funding it needs to, i.e. simple things like perhaps just a mailing of notice to the people in the floodplain. Also, simple things that could be considered is we don't have any evacuation route signs, particularly down at the beach or anywhere in the town. These are not expensive things, but these are effective things that don't cost a lot of money, but have to be funded and led by the town. 
So it would be my thought that you consider creating a committee. Its initial purpose would deal with community rating issues, but it should be broad enough to deal with all emergency management considerations, which fall into two very broad basic categories. The first of which is an emergency has just happened. So you call upon public safety, the Department of Public Works, and these people to address that. Or in the floodplain community rating approach, what it says is anticipate possible problems, particularly in the flooding area, and address them before an emergency happens i.e. create certain codes, certain zoning laws, certain requirements, certain elevations where appropriate. Uh, if properties are continuously flooded, consider not allowing those properties can, to continue to exist in the floodplain. Uh, things of this nature. But I think to, to start this year, we, in my opinion, you have to start with the town taking control of the issue, representing the town, funding it, and as it sits right now, budgets kind of are funded departmentally. And I don't think there's any particular budget for emergency management in terms of uh, serious dollars. I found one appropriation for $1,000 <coughs> on the public safety. And it was referred to as civilian defense, a term which I am old enough to remember, but I didn't know was <laughs> contemporarily in vogue. <laughs> So I think what, and you can't fund it through a particular department. You can't ask the police chief to put in his budget money to mail a notice to 2,000 people that there's a flood insurance problem coming for them. <clears throat> you have to make it kind of an overlapping thing, put it into more of a general fund where it could be cooperatively funded by all the departments involved. And you might have every department in this town involved. Planning, zoning, the building inspector, the conservation commission, the legal department, management of the town. It's a very broad swath of things that need to be sewn together to make this work effective. I also think if you create this sort of a committee, it's like an isotone and glove. It'll fit many hands of concern. You can walk up the street to investigate whether or not you should train the police department to administer Nardone, which has been proven to be very effective as an antidote to heroin overdoses in the moment. And things of this nature, there are just so many things you can do with it. It's as broad as you want, choose to make it. It isn't just an insurance flood issue. It's a community management process that when put in place, focuses the whole community on a common interest toward a common Good. I had my spiel and thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. Others at the table for discussion? No, okay. Said it all. Thank you. Um, Mr. Griffin, you're a rep to the HBAC. This is perhaps prone to that area? The floor is yours. So much of it would be prone to that area, but I did talk to Mr. Ladd and he says this has to be by people that are certified to deal with all the different department heads. And I know as far as Fred is concerned, there's a certain protocol. On if, if I can jump in on a couple of points quickly. Um, from what I hear, the description, it crosses over in my mind into a couple of things. Uh, one is the discussion about the insurance rating part, which makes good sense for those in that area that have that impact to spread that information. However, I start to disagree with you somewhat when we start getting into the broader scope of the emergency management part. While absolutely I don't disagree that we could use more investment in that area for the town, I think the budget is somewhere in the vicinity of $2,500 to $3,000 total for emergency management. Um, those functions are, are set in by law for the emergency management director. There is a process. It doesn't have to be a department head of the police or fire, but mostly in the state it is. Um, a number of the things you've talked about as far as the several programs within emergency management, um, I'm currently the emergency management director still. Uh, there are a number of programs out there that you describe. You're, you're absolutely right. We have a number of plans that we have developed in this town over the years, our hazard mitigation plan, which does just what you talked about. What are our risks in these areas? What can we do to mitigate that? There are FEMA programs to do that. The town has taken advantage of those in the past. Culvert expansion, cleaning things out, making flood-prone areas safer. 
um, in addition to some of the hazard mitigation <coughs> things that are used to repetitive loss properties to help those people come out of repetitive loss. So I see sort of two separate areas here. One is advocating for the flood mapping issues, and the second is the issue with regard to emergency management. Uh, that could be a more global thing. You're absolutely right. It's very specific by law on the authority uh, because you're talking about uh, a number of things that emergency management does from response mitigation to recovery. Um, and that role is an ancillary role to has been in this town for well over 30 years that I'm aware of and well mm -hmm. beyond that I'm sure. It's a very common model. There are some places that do more uh, with civilian people. There's an entire, for example, in Seabrook, an entire group that's a, a separate emergency management group made up of former police officers, the emergency management director. So a lot can be done. I see it as two separate things, advocating for the flood, pro for the flood insurance issues, Absolutely makes good sense to get people with expertise in that area. Emergency management, I think that's a more mindful, slow approach on that. You're absolutely right. There are more investment we need. I agree with that. I advocate for that. And there are certainly funds and ideas that we want to implement that the funds aren't there for. Yeah. And, you know, so there, we would have to find out more and discuss this, particularly when Fred comes back, um, of how it could be woven in to be able to um, make a benefit of the different um, department heads or whatever. Um, but I know that there's a big focus on so many people at the beach. I know so many people that have motels, Chuck, you're one of them, that this is such a big issue. So, and I, you know, the Hampton Beach Area Commission is uh, for about economic development. So there's certainly something there. In fact, on the uh, Updating the master plan, that's the part that I'm on, actually, flood insurance or flooding and Dean, with Dean Merrill. Um, so we need to open this conversation there. We need to talk to Fred. We need to get moving on it to see what we can do. I know that so many of the things you have said, and, and I think they sound wonderful, but I'll tell you, it's been an up uh, hill battle here to send out any mailings. And the big one that we fought over and over and over and over about is the one from the beach precinct about telling people if they need to opt out of the, um, uh, that has caused many, many conversations here at the Board of Selectmen for different boards. So it just doesn't happen that easily that they send out mailings. And this sounds like the best uh, one of the better things that I've heard about for a mailing, and particularly the way that you mentioned about how that does directly qualify to get some discounts. So these are the things we've got to get this conversation going, and we've got to get it going quick. But I will bring it up at the beach, um, the Hampton Beach Area Commission. I think it's something that we should work with the precinct. And Fred will have a lot to say about this, I can guarantee it. He'll have a lot of ideas. Uh, and definitely I'll find out as soon as I can about, you know, having so many of our committees, there's been problems in the past with them dealing with the department heads. So that's why I know there's some set. This, this has to be backed by the selectmen. Mm -hmm. I, that they, that you have to have full support of it, and, and then we can move forward with it. So. Well, it could be backed by the selectmen, but you know, there's there's many different ways to to have different people dealing on it. I mean, my thought as you were talking was that maybe uh, from all these different department heads uh, or departments, we could have maybe each area that's directly affected uh, would have a person on the committee. And s mm. who's in charge of the committee? That's what we have to find out. Yeah. But you know, the Hampton Area Commission, the Beach Precinct. Uh, you know, the different department heads, um, and see what we can do with this. It's certainly a great idea. It's, it's music to my ears, I can tell you. And, you know, the, I know that the people that, uh, that I have neighbors right now that are really are concerned about selling their house. They have to go and they're moving to, you know, they're ready, they're 80 years old. They're ready to move on to the next level. And now they're facing this. No matter where where they go, when it comes to a price on their house, they're going to get take a back seat. So this is a big issue, and I hope there is something that we can do. And it, we'll be talking about it, and I'm going to certainly bring it up at the, the uh, 
Area Commission, and I think it should be con a continued topic at the Hampton Beach Precinct. Thank you, Selectman Wilson. I'm opposed to any more permanent committees, and we have a way of not sunsetting other committees when we, uh, when we have them set up. I don't want to see any more permanent stuff. What I would like to focus on is the, um, the actual setting up of a warrant article to authorize uh, us as a town to go ahead and uh, talk about the floodplain ordinance amendments uh, and amendments to the floodplain regulations. I will say that there is a difference, by the way, in primary and secondary residences. You know that in your area. And the secondary residences are the ones, are the ones that are really going to get hit. In addition, the um, increases that you're talking about are going to pile up on top of each other. If you have a 5% increase this year, that stays, and then you get another 5% on top of that, uh, ad infinitum. Uh, as I think I mentioned before, when we went to the FEMA meeting, I think it was this past June, uh, and I talked to the FEMA representative about those repetitive losses, which drive me crazy, uh, I said, well, what are you doing when people are building in floodplains and building in wet areas, and they keep having claims, and they keep building again? And he said, call your congressman. So that was a big productive question. Um, we have caused a tremendous amount of problems ourselves because we keep building in the wetlands. We've almost totally destroyed the marsh. And I went to the estuary, the Seacoast Estuary uh, Alliance meeting, the second one uh, that they held in Hampton, and the Seacoast professor, a, a UNH professor had a map, and he showed the beach, and he showed in blue where we're going to be on 2020, and then by 2050, and almost all of the beach, especially the lower end, is gone because we keep building and building and building in the wet spots. So we've got to start working with planning, with zoning, and doing our ordinances. But to stick our finger in the dike and solve the problem, have you, uh, Bob, have you gentlemen received the October 1st letter from the Office of Energy and Planning in here? I'm going to give you my copy in a second. Uh, it's d addressed to uh, the manager, and it says, Dear Mr. Welch, as you may recall, the Federal Emergency Management Agency sent your community a letter dated April 9, 2014, regarding the preliminary flood insurance study and accompanying flood insurance rate maps for Rockingham and Stratford County. Uh, FEMA also held two community coordination meetings on May 8, 2014, to review the maps. And then they go on talking about the maps, but it says, we are sending the results electronically to more easily prepare the ordinance amendments for your 2015 town meeting. And that's what I'm focused on, personally, what we can get on the warrant for this March. The results detail the floodplain ordinance amendments to be proposed, and if needed, the amendments to the floodplain regulations in your community's subdivision and site plan review regulations. By adopting the amendments at the 2015 town meeting, your community will remain eligible, and this is what you're saying, to participate in the NFIP once the new maps become effective in fall 2015. Any needed amendments to the town's subdivision and site plan regulations can be done at any time by the planning board prior to the map's effective date. Our goal is to keep you enrolled in the program and not risk suspension, so we will do all we can to assist you in this process. That's why I would like to be focused like a laser on what's going to happen in March, and we have a relatively short time frame to do this. Uh, would you pop that over to them, Jim? So, and I, I'll get another copy, the, the October 1st letter from FEMA. You guys can have that because I think you ought to have that to refer to. But my, my focus right now is to try to help this community understand that we need to get, we need to get on board with trying to make any adjustments that are recommended to us so that we can start, as you said, going up to level nine, level eight, level seven, whatever we need to do. And I think time's, time is, is uh, of the essence right here. Uh, some of the other stuff, uh, frankly, we need to, and you need to, and, and the town needs to focus on what planning and zoning, especially planning, are doing with allowing developments again and again and again and again in definitive wetlands, it's not helping anybody.
but I really appreciate the work you've done, Bob. You've really been focused on this, and I want to see us work with that, with what it says in that letter. Okay, so, no, I think I agree with what both previous selectmen said. Um, <clears throat> if 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 we can find a way to mail out a mailing, if that helps, get us on that process to do the. Uh, Level nine or, or level eight? I think we should we should look into that, um, and I think we as we move forward, see what we can do at town meeting to to uh, continue down this path. I think it's something that we need to do. But we got to get prepared fast. Right, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, I think your ideas are great, and I think the idea of <clears throat> right away starting to move up that that list is really important. And when they say that you that you need to notify everybody in the area. Do they say how you have to notify them? I mean, can it be notified electronically? Can it be notified uh, notices put up and stuff like that? I mean, what are the requirements to, to meet that first one to move up the, of, of notifying people? Do you know, Bob? What? I don't know for certain, but I would guess a, a letter to a, a, the owner residents or the absentee owners would be mm -hmm. probably the requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, that's if, I, if I may just say, I've, I've, I've examined the website for the community rating incentives, and, and uh, after you met with us last week, and there are protocols that are identified. There's links, mm -hmm. there's procedures, there's metrics, the whole okay. nine yards. So mm -hmm. it's, it's on the web. It's on the you web. Plug in that. It's it's right there. Okay. So I mean, we should start See her website. doing that, and 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 and. You know, notifying people exactly what's going to happen because the website is pretty good. The FEMA website, we it, look it, things it up, is. but if people don't know about it. And is it true that that I was uh, told that if somebody buys flood insurance now, mm. that flood insurance is grandfathered? Possibly. How's that for? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. Right. somebody told me that it was grandfathered, and then even if they sold the property, that it would be grandfathered to the new owner. If you have flood insurance prior to the new rating maps, which come in September 15, yeah. and you're the primary owner of that property, yes. then you probably are grandfathered. You're grandfathered in, in the zone that you're in, is that right? Yeah. You're, so you're in an X zone, and you're, yeah. you're you can't change to the a, zone. a, a no. worse zone. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're grandfathered. Okay. You're not grandfathered against increases. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's done federally. But and you're, you're, gonna, yeah. you're right. You your increases are based on the zone, and yep. if you're grandfathered into a a, a more restrictive zone, you get one result. If you grandfather into a more favorable zone, which is primarily X, then you get a lower premium and you can carry that forward. Not only is that beneficial to you, it's critically important when you want to sell the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something I, I would think that really people need to know. You've got to get those notifications out. And I think, you know, working with Jamie, I mean, we have things in effect now, right? Mm -hmm. You know, or working with Fred, when well, Fred comes back, yeah. that, uh, you know, to make sure that we do start moving moving ahead with all this, so that it, so that we are mitigating the problem before we're faced with. There have been projects that we have moved forward on. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Right. This isn't just a village district issue. I mean, this right. town has You're right. zones all Outside over the district, right. yeah. including on the river. Up the river. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's just it's not just a village right. district. Right. Yeah. So if people are thinking, well, I don't live near the beach, well, we know a lot of this town floods. Right. And and they're not anywhere near the beach. So You're right. It's something you have to. We have to work on um, Mr. No. Griffin. I just want to say that, you know, we have to be careful what we propose uh, and just you can't just jump into something. I believe that I'm one of the lower levels uh, on the, from what I can see from looking on, the, you know, to what level that I'm on. But my house was built in the 1800s and it is only flooded once in 1978. I, I've always had flood insurance. I've never claimed it, uh, anything. So I don't have a problem with flooding. And many people that are built into the flood zone don't have a problem with flooding. And to be truthful, I don't know of anything that's been built in recent years that has a problem with flooding. Thank you. And the last comment. Was Super forced. quick follow-up. Um, if individuals are buying their homes outright and don't have a mortgage, Many of them may not have flood insurance That's correct. because it's the it's mortgage driven for most of this stuff. So you have to be careful of that. And then once again, your primary or secondary residence. So people need to watch out if they don't have flood insurance now because they don't have a mortgage. Also, your elevation certificates are critical. 
Thank you, Selectman Wolsey. Uh, the National Flood Insurance Program, uh, up until uh, a couple of years ago, was essentially bankrupt. They called it an insurance yes. program. It is essentially a, a taxpayer-funded deficit program. Yep. Uh, it was wiped out by both New Jersey and New Orleans. Uh, it's inextricably bound to the mortgage community, as Selectman Wolsey says. So if you have a government-guaranteed mortgage and you don't have flood insurance, it's problematic for the taxpayer at any rate. We all know what happened with the mortgage meltdown. That drives us to our meeting tonight, and I commend you, Robert, mm. for your, your drive specifically yep. on our response as leaders for that specific agenda item, which is that rating mitigation as we, as we work that game. So that will get command attention here. I, I will Good. echo Selectman Wilsey's uh, comments in terms of a, a safety committee that is an addition uh, <laughs> supervisory role over our fire, over our police, over our public yep. works. I am in no way, shape, or form uh, for that. The selectmen have that role, and that to add another uh, element to that uh, in terms of safety, uh, uh, I'm just opposed to for all the obvious reasons. But we'll be back to you on that. I think all of the board will be looking at that website. That was an excellent idea on the safety, and that's going to get command attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, you, you can probably come? call Jennifer Gilbert, too. I mean, yeah. you've got her information there. I would just comment, much of what the assistant manager said about what he was doing as the police chief are the very things that you could argue with FEMA to mitigate the premium. Yeah. But FEMA requires you to notify them that you're in the rating, and you want them to come out and do a site inspection. Yeah, it, there's, a, there's a whole list of parameters. Yeah. The website's yeah. interesting. We're yeah. going to give that our yeah. serious right. attention. We appreciate your effort. We appreciate yours. Yeah. And finally, we have Tom Young, who's a contractor for FEMA, speak at the beach in, uh, in Jennifer Gilbert's absence. Yeah. But I would suggest, yes, as Jennifer Gilbert is the mm -hmm. charge to fare for the state, she can mm -hmm. walk the town for a while. Paperwork, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. you guys need to watch your sound at your meetings because sometimes it's difficult to hear when the presentations are being made. You might want to check with the tech staff. Romans 6, approval of minutes. We do watch. In yes, motion. we do. Actually, before you move, there is one amendment I think should be made, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, we noticed at the end of the meeting, a um, motion was made to go into a non-public meeting on a 91A, 3, 2A, and C, mm -hmm. and a 91A, 2A, 1. It's been recommended we make sure we notify that to be a motion to enter into a non-meeting with legal counsel under 91A, 2I, B. I make that motion. A second. Second. King Griffin, all those in favor? Unanimous? To the specific minutes, modifications, corrections, a motion. Motion to accept as amended. Second. Royal Waddell, all those in favor? Unanimous? Town Manager's Report, Roman 7. So. Uh -huh. Sure. I have uh, received <laughs> today the uh, 2000. 14 second half property tax warrant for your review and signature if you deem appropriate. Uh, second half property tax warrant, the amount of $25,293,812.09 for your review and signature. Also attached is a copy, you've all seen this in your packet, but essentially bottom line is that uh, the tax rate has remained the same for 1831. Did you care to read the finance director's email that you sent to the board? Sure. Uh, the tax rate has officially been set by DRA. The municipal portion ended up going up only 20 cents from 704 to 724. The tax rate itself remained level at 1831. If the warrant can be signed tonight. The tax collector should be able to have the bills out early next week. Christie's available to come before the board. Uh, I'm sure she asked that I did that tonight, and we can put a copy of each in your mailbox. So Thank we you. would ask that you do that. We have the warrant for your signature. Thank you. Does that require a motion, or is that just? I would do a motion, yes. Okay. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman, that we Second. accept the tax warrant. Woolsey, Griffin, all those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you. Sir? Um, the only other thing I think I have, sir, is there was a notice that came through the office about some work that PSNH was doing. Frankly, as I look at it, I'm not even sure it's worth talking about because I don't think they do work with that. So, wonderful. Thank you, sir. Questions for the town manager, Slick and Wilson? Um, just a reminder on the second half property tax warrant, when the town mails the bills out from that date, you will have 30 days to make your payment. 
So we're past the first of the month now, so your bills will be payable uh, sometime after the 3rd of December. Um, I noticed that there was been a problem with Audley uh, at the um, beach uh, going into areas where they shouldn't and breaking up all the pavement. Jamie, do you have anything, uh, any resolution? I hear it is. I know that that issue is being worked on. Um, yeah. There has been some issues that were pointed out, there's some issues with regard to access. Um, right. And I know that that's being worked on. Okay, good, because they better behave themselves over there. Uh, okay, and the other thing that was brought up before and seemed to have fallen through the cracks was the uh, White's Lane and Jaunty's Lane. It's hunting season now, guys, and we need to have signs, and we need to have permanent signs, and we need to have them posted fast uh, at uh, White's Lane and Jaunty's Lane so that we don't have mm. problems. I'll take care of that tomorrow. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. No, thank you for your report. Just on uh, Mr. Moody's, the leaf pickup, are we only doing uh, once a month? To my knowledge, that is what's planned for this year. I don't know the details as to why I can get into that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Good point. So said. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. From an eight new business, one, 2015 draft warrant articles. Ah. Uh. <laughs> um, Selectman Wolsey, you specifically are going to bring up uh, the exit of the road issue, but we're going to have, um, given the tax rate just being set, uh, the tax we effects. Go. We do have some data. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, could you please lead us into this, and could you discuss uh, how we are for scheduling, if there's any deadlines that we need to be cognizant of, et cetera, et cetera. Please, sir, close yours. I know there's interest to discuss some of the DPW uh, articles. I spoke to the DPW director today, and he is in on the 17th. Uh, for his monthly. Mm -hmm. So if that fits with your schedule, I would suggest that we table those articles until that point in time. Yep. Um, and then that one night we can take those as a globe. Uh, Good. My understanding is he is working on some alternatives to uh, the major exit road project for your review, and I think that might be mindful. Excellent. Uh, with regard to the others, uh, it's open to the board pleasure how you'd like to progress through this. Uh, whether you want to take time to review them all that you see them, you have the tax impact uh, that Christie's gone through for you. Um, there are a few in here that um, are easy, that are mm -hmm. normal. You can bite those off tonight if you like. Those are the ones that are get a year and uh, not really questionable. So I live with the most discretion I want to proceed. Selectman Wilson? Yeah, I, th I think we can start with number 11, the west side. I mean, the you know, planning board and zoning and all that stuff. And I do have a serious question on that bond issue for Exeter Road, but I'll hold that till the 17th on the CBA is the West Side sewer replacements. I don't want to see that on there until and unless there is a firm commitment between the town and Aquarian on replacing the water line and the sewer lines, the same as happened with Perkins and Auburn and so forth. I think that article is premature. And I'd like to see, I love to see sewers replaced, but I, I don't want to see something uh, premature on there. Uh, I have no problem with 12, the uh, fire pumper. Uh, skip DPW. I do have a problem with 14, and I'm going to tell you why. Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund, 300000 Remove 100000 to pave Belmont, Fairfield, and Ruth. No, 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 no. We okay, said can, we were going to take I, that out just, of the... Can yes. I just do a, a point of order? A yes. second, because we, we just said we're going to deal with DPW on the 17th. No, but this is not... This has nothing to do with DPW well, this, per well, you, se. You this just, is funding. Let me, let me just... You, you talked funding. about Article 14, yes. road improvement, and it's a DPW submission. Yeah. It's about roads. No, no. It's, a, it's about the Capital Reserve Fund, and I see that it hasn't been amended in here because we discussed taking the money out of the grant. Okay, well, I, I, I see this as something to address. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to let you keep on talking, but I'm, I'm, I would just like the, the director here, there is a substantial amount of money that it is, it is calling for, and I would like him to be here, but keep on. I, I just okay. wanted to make that point of order. This is like the school budget that started in the 80s, putting 300000 in for maintenance. Rusty knows that. And this is a standard to beef up the capital reserve fund so that we can finally do projects with it. So this is a, a boilerplate article, and really... Uh, has nothing to do with public works. We just want to make sure that we build up that capital reserve fund so someday we can use it. So the reconfigured Article 14 I don't have a problem with. Um, now, Article 15 we need to talk about when the uh, uh, 
uh, Public Works Director is here. Human service is a no-brainer. And the reval is a no-brainer. Uh, we need to have the people going door to door to check on the properties. Recreation fund uh, is no problem <coughs> as far as I'm concerned. The drainage master plan, I want to hold that for DPW because we need to, I need to have some answers on that. Energy and safety improvements, town offices, uh, I don't have a problem with that out of hand. The building's old. Article 21, part-time special police officers training. I do not want to see this in, the, in a special article. This board and the manager and the assistant manager should know what needs to be done. And that should be in the budget. I have no problem with the purpose. I object to seeing that as a special money article. Article 22, forfeiture fund is boilerplate. GASB 34 and 35 is long overdue. Long yeah, I would suggest overdue. you table that as well because there is the possibility that we may complete those projects by the end of the year out of this budget. We may not need that. The GASB so we'll project. Yeah, let's put that That's off fine. the very end. But this is a. The ice pond dam, uh, I, I completely object to that. The ice pond was dammed up in the late fall by the people in the area in the old days, and the pond was allowed to fill up so that they could cut ice with the casino and some of the other businesses. They're not doing that anymore. The purpose for that ice pond is gone. That should be allowed. To, that should be left alone. I'm not interested in whether people want a little decorative pond in their neighborhood. That pond area needs to be left alone. The meadow needs to be left alone. And I absolutely object to Article 24. Article 25, remove pine trees, pine grove, cemetery. I have no idea what it would cost to do that. I have no idea of the scope of the project. I, I think I want more explanation on that. What are they going to do about the stumps? You're in a graveyard there, folks. Are they going to remove all the trees, some of the trees? I have a big question mark on the Pine Grove Cemetery tree removal. Uh, animal control vehicle I have no problem with on 26. Traffic control for Beach Star Fire Station, once again, $25,000. Please, put it in the fire budget. Put it in the public works budget. Put it in some budget. But don't ask the public to sit there and fiddle around with a $25,000 article for the traffic lights. That probably should have been included in the fire station bond. Uh, Scarifier for parks and recreation, I have no clue what that is or what it will do. So I have a question mark on that one. Cemetery burial trust fund, I have no problem with either article 29 or I think there's one other cemetery article in there. Uh, there, Article 32, funds of cemetery lots directly to trustees of the trust fund. Uh, Conservation Land Acquisition Fund, pretty much a standard article. I have no problem with that. Article 31, Community Center Fund, I think it's outrageous to ask the public to set up another fund for something that might not happen forevermore, and we have far more important things to do than fool around with a community center fund which only talks about building, but if you build the darn thing, you're going to have to staff it and then watch the money. Um, trustees of the trust fund, investments of capital reserve funds, that's open. Established town forest, we need to really talk about that. I agree with the concept, but I want to see some work sessions on that with the Conservation Commission and the manager. Uh, it's, not, it's not as easy as it looks. And we should probably have, um, we can recover some bounds surveys from recent projects out there, but we need to define specifically and exactly where our town boundaries are in that area. Article 35, I have no problem with drawing from the Solid Waste District. I don't know about you. Abolish Heritage Commission, I think we agreed to do that earlier in the year. Taxi insurance lowering the liability limits um, if the public wants to do it fine by me I don't on article 38 myself personally I don't want to touch that no noise ordinance I never want to hear about it again <laughs> I don't want to do anything to it and if you guys want to do something to it then we're going to need to work on it but that is very low on my priority list 39 is petitioned 
and 40 is petition. And uh, <laughs> the manager is an optimist and reserved a couple more spots. So that's my run through. I don't know how you feel about it. A lot of it is going to be a matter of talking with Public Works. Selectman Griffin. <coughs> I feel very similar on some of the things that she said, and I feel a few things differently, and I'd like to see how, how the rest of the board feels about some of these issues. Mr. Bridal. Yeah, well, again, a lot of good comments were made. Uh, I, you know, I agree with you with 21. I think articles like that should be in the budget, which is the uh, police. Yes. Uh, not saying that I'm against that, I'm totally for it, but I think it's, it should be in the, in the working budget. You know, our, jo our job here is to make a budget, be f truthful, factual with it, and then explain it to the people and the voters so that they'll vote that. So we stop here in the word default budget. You know, people need to have the faith if they want their town to move forward. You, you, you know, my house doesn't cost the same it did 10 years ago to run. And, and neither does the town cost the same it did 10 years ago. And if you keep running a default budget, then that's what you have. So, <coughs> um, the Ice Pond Dam, um, I can agree with you. That was, that's the old Lamprey brothers, and they were the ones that, that had that. And that was uh, dammed up to, to make ice. And then in the spring, it was cut. The dam was taken out, and yes. they cut the grass to keep the grass low so they could put the mm -hmm. ice in there. Uh, Pine Grove Cemetery, I think we need to do something down there. There's a lot of old trees down there. Yeah. Uh, the potential is there for them to come over, and if they, if they do come over by themselves, then they're going to do a lot more damage to the graves yeah. than if we take them down. And I think that's the, um, that's the, the premise of that, is, is we want to take them down before they do damage some yeah. graves. Whether we have to grind the stumps, I don't know if that's it or not, but I'd rather see us come out and leave the stumps there than have it come out and have those trees uprooted and uproot some of the graves. I'd like to see a proposal though, right? Yep, that, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, the beach traffic control lights, yes, it probably should have put in, been put in the fire stations when they were built, but it wasn't. The tra they need that situation down there where they have the light at the, bo the bottom of uh, D Street uh, for both police and fire. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's something that we really need to do. Um, and basically the rest of it is just yeah. Um, well, I want to hear what I want to hear what Public Works has to say. Yes. Uh, as you were talking about the uh, uh, the paving, we we talked about taking some of that money that comes from the state. The state gives us to do state road uh, do, do, do paving on yeah. town roads, and for years they've taken that money and put it back into the budget. Yeah. Well, if that money comes to us to do paving, then let's do paving with it. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank you, sir, Mr. Okay, I'm going to agree with most of that. Um, I think the DPW stuff is the most important stuff, and, mm -hmm. I, and we do need DPW in here to discuss that before we can go on to it. I think that, that's really important. I agree with the ice pond that it, it, if it was there to cut ice, we're not cutting ice. Yeah, so, right. not, you know, I, I really don't think we need to do that. And uh, I also agree with the, you know, I would love to do the community center, but. Mm. I, I just don't think that it's something that, that we're going to be funding right now. So, yeah, the community center fund. Uh, right now, I don't I agree with her on that one, with Mary Louise on that one. Um, the taxi one, I agree on. Yeah. So, and I agree with the the training. This police one should be in the budget. I mean, we should build a budget. It shouldn't be all warrant articles because I think people get confused with warrant articles and they and they. Just go through them. Yeah. And we can move that in the budget at the delivery section. One, you're right. One of the things, you know, we're talking about the, this one for the community center, and I know that it came out of the, the revolving fund that we have. And, and this may not be the correct way to do it, but we have to start thinking about a community center and a center for our seniors. We have to start doing that. It's too long that they've been meeting in small spaces, too long that they've been meeting in in, in cramped quarters, borrowed spaces from our churches, which is all well and good. But we got to start doing that. Our, our community is not getting younger, it's getting older. And we need to find something, a common ground that we can work at to get them some space. I, 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 yes, I, I agree with that. And, and that, 
you know, we're talking, I mean, eventually they're going to be talking about schools and stuff like that. And I know where, where I used to work, they, they made it a community school when they built the school so that it could be used for community purposes also, which combined. Well, they, and they're doing that with uh, the middle school. The, the, the school department now is doing their, uh, uh, their they're <coughs> looking at what, what they need to do to the, the middle right. school for renovations. And so while they're doing that, they're, part of that is looking at that and looking at what they can do for our seniors, maybe to have some space in there. We just can't put it, you know, just can't say we're not going to do it right. without having something we can okay. do for them. We're going to Mr. Griffin now. It, one of the things, as I was many times bored with all this campaigning that's going on now, but one thing I did learn was, and I guess I should have probably realized it, is that New Hampshire is the third oldest state after I presume Florida and probably Arizona. Um, and I believe Hampton now is the oldest town in New Hampshire. Uh, used to be the second oldest, but I, I believe that's true. I'm not positive, but the average age of here in Hampton, we have a, we're one of the, it, we're certainly one of the top five oldest towns in New Hampshire. So there ha I agree with what Rusty said. There's got to be some way we can do something or have some type of focus for the future. For Thank community you. And selecting, pardon me, sir. You all, you all yeah. Okay. Selecting also. We've got a few considerations here. Some of the older people in Hampton go to Florida the off season, so they're not exactly sitting there waiting to be entertained in a community center. Number two, it's not just the cost of a community center; it's the cost of staffing the community center. And you know, I mean, I want four firefighters, and everybody's crying. You know what it costs to have staff and to maintain extra employees. There is a huge long-range cost potentially with this community center idea, and I don't think this is the time to tackle it. We've got to fix the roads, and we've got far more important things that we've got to do, including beefing our, our departments with the extra population that's coming in, the extra traffic that's coming in, the extra stresses on the community. I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I don't disagree with you, but I just don't want to forget it. That's all. Okay. Thank you. I think we've, we've uh, discussed the senior center. Everyone's taken an initial Just forget it on the warrant. An, an initial chop uh, on this, this list, which we've just seen last week. Uh, we've got a legal chop on it. Uh, we do have some, some tax implications. Um, Mr. Sullivan, are you aware or can you advise us a deadline or a prudent time when we can um, have our yay or nay on the Warren articles? Yeah, the final deadline stuff, I don't have that specific to, to get to. I will have that for your next meeting specifically in your timeline. I wanted you to be able to see it today, absorb it. I think you're still ahead of the ahead of the path of where we have been in the past. Got it. Uh, I, I, and I will say this, and I just want to kind of close this out because we've talked about it and it is preliminary, is that um, we're way ahead of the deadline. And Mr. Welch discussed this before he left. Uh, and, and however, we do want to get this information so the budget committee That's can make their decisions. The so. Yeah the shareholders can educate themselves. Mm -hmm. Going to the list itself, my, my comments are that Public Works alone has almost seven and a half million dollars yeah. uh, on the plate here. Uh, and uh, the board has very little documentation outside of Exeter Road. That includes the West Side sewer replacements. That includes equipment replacement. There is no package. Nobody in the world right. uh, even begins to discuss whether they're for uh, a replacement without documentation without bid performance, without comparison, without contrast. So until such time as that comes through from Public Works, uh, and these are issues that have been on the, the burner for years, uh, they need to step it up. In terms of uh, purchasing a fire engine, that has been discussed. Again, there's no new information. There's no rehash of information. There's nothing here to kick the tires on. There's simply a warrant article for $575,000. There's nothing that has been provided this year for any command decision on spending almost $600,000. Um, I'm sure I could go through paperwork this high over the last three years and find it, but it will probably be unsuccessful. It'll take me. My, my point is, is that there's no supporting documentation for uh, uh, requests from taxpayers uh, for the command element to evaluate it at this late hour from department heads 
uh, that, that is going to approach $10 million in askings. Uh, and you can't expect uh, the public to bite into that, and you certainly can't expect the board to do that. And so the department heads really have to step it up, provide the documentation. Uh, if the board is fine with the way it's going, that's, that's your opinions, but I will certainly vote no unless I have the chance to research uh, what is approaching $10 million of taxpayer money. And we're going to leave that subject on that right now. We're going to go to Roman 9, Old Business. Select my Wilson. Ah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. I think we need to visit, well, let's put it this way. Um, talking about the needs of the community, I think we need to focus more on enhancing revenue. I think it's foolish to keep looking at the town clerk's office every year. I'm very happy when I see that the town clerk has taken in more in revenue uh, than we had anticipated. But we can't keep relying heavily on the town clerk's office. We need to, to be seeking out in behalf of the public other sources of revenue. I have copies, and these are left over from the old days. I think what I'll do is give my copies to the, uh, to the assistant manager and see if we can duplicate for all of you. This is uh, fee schedules for building permits and fire system permits. I think we need to upgrade our permit costs um, in fire department for fire inspection and also for building. I know that we had, I think last year, we had a proposal on the building fees for, um, uh, by the building inspector. But this is uh, Portsmouth and Seabrook and Exeter, et cetera, and these are the fee schedules. Uh, no big rush, Jamie, but I think that it would be good if the board has a chance to look over all that stuff, see what other communities are doing, see if we can beef up our... Um, opportunities at getting more fees in, fees from individuals who are using the services of the town, such as building inspection and fire inspection. If a fire inspection ha inspector has to go back to a property four, five, ten, twelve times, uh, there certainly should be compensation for that. The other um, factor, if you read the memo from Christie, uh, on, let's see, Oct uh, October 29th, she sent a little memo talking about the health trust and how there's another entity, and I have so many thousand papers sitting in front of me here. That I brought it with me, but I, I don't see it. There appears to be another entity that is jumping in to uh, provide uh, perhaps a little more reasonable health insurance rate. Uh, I know it's her memo of October 29th, and I'm trying to find it here. But. I think it's Transcom. Is the oh, thank you. Company. Yes, here it is. Uh, on another note, I attended a very interesting workshop this morning in Concord. It involved a presentation from a nonprofit organization offering health insurance plans to municipalities. It appears that Health Trust may have some pretty good competition. Let me know if you are interested in discussing this information. I would say yes, yes, yes. With one caveat, however, because the health trust was supposed to be not for profit, Mr. Bridal, right? Yep. So um, he who sups with the devil must use a long spoon. So I think we ought to explore it, but I don't want to take it at face value 100%. But if we can help the health costs go down, it certainly would be great. Um, Memo on the Rockingham County Planning uh, Commission dues. I think we ought to provide a, the dues request for 2015. It's dated September 29th, this one, Jamie. I think we should provide a copy of that to the Chairman of the Budget Committee. I think that might be informative for them. And I agree with, with Rusty and Mr. Moody on that leaf pickup. Uh, it's not reasonable, f especially for property owners who don't have access to trucks or large vehicles or whatever to expect to put the whole season's leaf fall in bags on one week. We really need to take a look at that. Uh, one, one week a year is not really reasonable. Maybe we can discuss that with Public Works when we see them. And my final, I am coming to an end. I mentioned impact fees last week and the planning board. Um, and I've been thinking this over all week, which is dangerous. 
I think I would like to see us as a board invite the members of the planning board in for a joint meeting to talk about the municipal impact fees. Uh, one member of the planning board, whom I will not name publicly, and I discussed this last year, and he said, I will never do that. I did threaten last year to, I challenged them actually last year to put a warrant article on the warrant relieving themselves of the authority to assess municipal impact fees, and they wouldn't do that either. We are losing a tremendous opportunity to recover costs for municipal improvements by developers who are using this town, they're setting up buildings in this town, and then they leave. And we're left with the traffic and the congestion and all the other problems, including uh, intrusion into the wetlands. And I think we should be compensated as a community. And I think it is the planning board's responsibility to do that. They have been doing it. Uh, Peter Ross was charged impact fees, I think about $12,000 for the school, potentially, if there were school children living in his new Holiday Shores project. There probably won't be any, but he was assessed a fine for the school impact fees. But the planning board has never done that for the town. You can't go back in time. We've built two fire stations, the Church Street pump station and the police station, and we can't back charge <coughs> for those projects. But any improvements in the community that need to be made, sewers is a big one. A big one with the sewer treatment plant. I would like to see us sit down and have a civilized conversation with the planning board and say, look, you have the authority to do this. The town can use the revenue. We really can use revenue to help offset the tax rates. Increased costs for the fire department, the police department, the public works department. Jamie could speak to the increase in, in uh, uh, residents uh, whether they're permanent residents or primary residents, so they're here and they're coming in and you have, what, 36 condos in one building and, and all sorts of uh, impacts on the community. So I would like to see us try perhaps to do a little gentle persuasion uh, with the planning board okay. and if ask I, them If I may, because we've, we've heard yep. that and we've heard you um, uh, yep. um, eloquently discuss the need for new revenue. Uh, yes. Who was the liaison of the planning board? I am. Um, Mr. Griffin, and, and so I just want to... I, I, I just They're want not to say, take this easy. well, you need we're to not. Send a it, it's hard enough just to meet with one board, and you're the liaison. That's specifically why we have. This is just my opinion. That's why we have liaisons, and then you work with that board and their chair. And that's an autonomous board, and your points are well taken. They're so going to love him for that, like uh, they loved me last year. However, um, it's your bailiwick, and you're next on the uh, old business. So, it, the floor is yours, sir. <laughs> I have no problem, but. I think if, if you want to invite them here, they should be sent an invitation from the board. I, I, I just have no interest in doing that myself personally. Mm -hmm. That's why you are the I will bring it up, but I bet you they have no interest in coming. Thank you. Selectman Wright. No, the, uh, the only one thing, and I, uh, the impact fees as far as, as you talk for the, for the fire department, um, I, I, I can agree with you, but I, I also can gr agree with Chim and Bean, that until we do some modernization and making it easier for the for the public to use the the forms and stuff like that, we that we need to address so that you can go online and get some of the stuff and and do it so it's easier for the people to do it. I think we need to address that first. So. Sir, yes, uh, I think bringing in more revenue is excellent wherever we can do that. But I think it has to be well planned out. It has to be really thought about. And I, th I, th I think, as I agree, that the planning board is an autonomous board and, and, and that we should have our liaison mm -hmm. work with them and discuss it with them and come up with a, with a plan. I think new developments impact fees, maybe. But also, you do get the tax base from new developments, so you are getting money from new developments. It might not be all you need. You know, there are lots of ways that we need new revenue that we've talked about, rooms and meals, taxes, et cetera. We should be investigating all of that. Um, but I think uh, inviting the planning board, I'm against. Okay, thank you. Uh, Roman 10, closing comments. Any closing comments? Seeing none, a motion to adjourn at 2044. Waddell, <laughs> Griffin, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. <laughs>